What's going on YouTube? So today I wanted to cover a topic that I've been asked about the most and that is what is my camera settings for the Canon 5D Mark IV? So let's go ahead and get into that and turn on the camera and we're gonna go by each menu. So the first thing you're gonna do is hit menu and the first menu that should pop up is the shoot one menu. We'll go to image quality. I shoot raw, I don't do raw plus JPEG, although I do know some people that wanna have that option. So let's go ahead and go down. Image review, I have it four seconds. The beep, I have on disable. I don't really care for the noise, I don't really need it. Release shutter without card, I keep on off. The lens correction, I also keep on off or disable. External speed light control, I don't touch this. Let's go to the next screen, the shoot two screen. The exposure and comp, I keep how it is at zero. ISO speed settings, ISO speed currently is at 800. I'm not using that right now. The range for stills, the minimum is 100 and the maximum is can go actually all the way up to 102,400. So I, I put it on that. The auto range, the minimum is at 100. The maximum is at 12,800. I put that all the way up to 32,000. Minimum shutter speed, I keep it auto. You have the option also, however, to go down to manual. I just keep it on auto. The next thing we're gonna go to is the white balance. The white balance, I've always had an auto white balance. However, you can go to info and depending on if you're in ambient setting or tungsten setting, you can change it from auto white balance to auto white balance, white priority. So you would use white priority if you're in a tungsten setting and you wanna keep the whites white. If you're in an ambient setting and you wanna keep that warm, vibrant look, you would go to auto white balance. So let's go ahead and get out of that. Custom white balance, I, I haven't touched. White balance shift, I keep that, I keep it that. Color space I have on sRGB. Go to the next screen. The picture style I use is cine style. Now I know a lot of people use neutral, but for my photos, I prefer cine style. I wanna have a flat look as much as possible when I'm viewing it through the viewfinder. Now I know what a lot of people are gonna say is, is you're shooting raw, so all the images are gonna be able to be played with no matter what settings you use. However, when I use CineStyle, it gives me the flat image through the viewfinder, so I'm able to have a representation of the best flat image. Now, I also have the C-Log Neutral and the C-Log 3 options here. I put them on my camera as a user setting, although I've yet to probably use them but one or two times, and that was for video. I just didn't like how they look compared to CineStyle. For the CineStyle setting, you're gonna have to install that onto your Canon. I will put a link down below where you can download CineStyle and have it installed onto your Canon. You will need the cord, however, that came with the original Canon Mark IV box. You're gonna have to have that plugged up to the computer. Again, I will have the download link below for CineStyle so you can put that on your camera. That is what I use for my photos 100% of the time. Long exposure noise reduction, I keep on off. High ISO speed, I disable. Highlight tone priority, I'll usually keep it on enable. Now what this does is it tries to keep your highlights from being blown out. Now the only thing with this is when you enable it, you can't go below 200 ISO. If you disable it, you can go down all the way to 100. So this is what I use for my photos. I try to make sure my highlights don't get blown out. I'll keep it on enable, D plus. Dust delete data, I don't touch. Multi exposure, I don't touch. HDR mode, I don't touch. I don't use that. Interval, to, I keep all these settings the same. Live view shoot, I have on enable. Autofocus method, I keep on flexi zone autofocus. Touch shutter, I have on enable. Grid display off. Aspect ratio 16 by 9. Exposure simulation enable. And on the last shoot menu, silent LV shoot mode two and metering timer four seconds. Moving on to autofocus, I use case four. Now, depending on what you're shooting photo or video wise, it will give you an example for each case. All you have to do is go to that case and hit info. So for example, I use case four 90 to hundred percent of the time. And that's because I'm doing a lot of music videos or I'm doing behind the scenes, concert photos, where it's very high pace, fast moving back and forth. But like I said, you can hit info and you can read a description of what this case is and all the way at the bottom, it'll give you subject examples as to what that case would be for. So as I said, I use case four, which an example that would be soccer, motorsports, basketball. Autofocus option two, AI server first image priority I have on focus and the AI server second image priority I have on plus two. On focus option three, you have lens electronic manual focus, enable after one shot, autofocus assist beam firing on, one shot autofocus release prior, I keep on all the way over on focus priority. Moving on to list four, on list four, the only thing that I've changed is the select autofocus point. I've kept that on all points. 
However, there is a lot of different options on this list that I will go into a more detailed video on, but this is just giving a quick rundown of my settings. List number five, I've kept on everything default as well. We can skip past the play settings. I, I don't do anything related to this. Moving on to the setup one, this is gonna be, have your record function. This camera obviously will have the dual memory card slots. I keep the record function on standard and I have the folder as 100 EOS 5D, which I believe is the default. File numbering, I keep on continuous. Auto rotate, I keep on on. Um, format card, you just format the memory card. Auto power off, I have on one minute. LCD brightness, I have on auto. LCD color tone standard. Now, they give you different options for the LCD color tone. If you want to, it gives you a warm tone, standard, cool tone, or a cool tone to look. Like I said, I just keep it on standard. I don't mess around with that. You can set your date and your time, language, English, obviously. Touch control I have on standard. Moving on from this list, GPS settings. GPS settings I keep on disable. Your communication settings is gonna be where you can have your built-in wireless settings. That's where you're gonna do your Wi-Fi. I have my phone connected to my camera so I'm able to send my photos from my camera to my phone. List number five, we move on from that. So for this list, I really haven't touched anything. Let's move on from this list. Go on to set two, move on from that. So on this list, the only thing that I've touched is the custom controls. Now I'm gonna make a more detailed separate video on this explaining what this is and, and what options you have related to the custom controls and being able to set certain buttons on your camera to be able to do certain things. So let's go ahead and move on from that. I leave all this the same leave that the same so this is going to be my menu this is also where you can configure and set up your menu to put your favorite options so when you're in a fast-paced situation all you actually have to do is hit menu and you can go all the way to the star your favorites and my favorites is the white balance the picture style the movie record quality the sound recording and the uh, BTN function will go into more depth like I said on that one that's a part of your custom controls so this is everything that was related to the photo settings let's move on to the video settings real quick so for video settings this is all the same this is also all the same picture style stays at center style high ISO speed I keep on off highlight tone priority I do D plus or on list number four now this is where the movie servo autofocus is gonna be I have that on enable I have autofocus method on flexi zone autofocus grid display off for movie record quality when I record 24 frames or 23.976 seconds I choose the all-in for editing option instead of doing the standard IPB option also when I do 60 frames per second for slow motion I do the same all-in for editing option instead of the IPB setting and for 4k I do 23.98 or 23.976 aka 24 frames per second you also have the option to do 120 frames per second at 1280 by 720. So all you would have to do is go to high frame rate. If you want the 120 frame slow motion, you do enable. If you want it off, you go to disable. Now when you disable it, make sure if you're trying to record in 23 frames, 24 frames per second, you go to movie record and you go back to your 23.97 option. Because every time you put on the high frame rate and do enable, and then go back to disable it will go to the lower slow motion quality so for sound recording i do manual and this is because i record on an external mic most of the time so i'll go on manual and then i will set it on record level what i'll do is just have it on plus three or four but to make sure it's on plus three or four i will go all the way down to negative and then just go one two three four and then set that the wind filter i have on Disable. The only time you'll need that is if you're in an outside situation and, and there's wind. So for the attuninator, I keep on enable. Now what this does is this makes sure you're, that your volume or that your levels never peaked. This is a great thing to have because even if you have an external mic on your camera, you can still have the levels peaking, you still have the audio peak, which is gonna give distortion and you can't fix that in audio post. When it comes to video and audio in that aspect, it's kind of the same thing. You can't fix distorted, blown out audio, just like how you can't bring back the highlights if you blow out the highlights in other aspects of video and photos. So I keep the attuninator on enable. So that's the audio settings. Movie servo, autofocus speed I have on when active, always on, and the autofocus speed I have on zero. 
the movie servo autofocus track sensitivity usually i'll try to keep it on one sometimes i'll put it on plus two or plus three but 90 percent of the time i'll have it on plus one moving on to the autofocus section again i have it on case four this is for uh, 90 percent of the things that i do related to video and that's going to cover all of my settings related to the canon 5d mark 4. subscribe to keep up to date with all the videos that i'll be dropping on this channel be sure to let me know in the comments what other how to's tutorials and any other kind of content you want to see dropping on this channel appreciate y'all see y'all later